So our idea was to study neural network in a more functional manner. This is Arthur Jacob, a PhD student in mathematics at EPFL. Because we know that studying the behavior of the parameters during training is very difficult because the cost is non-convex for neural networks. Let's recap a little bit. A neural network is this big structure used to do machine learning. Importantly, it is parameterized. And the whole point of machine learning is to determine adequate values of the parameters. Now, the mathematics of machine learning has been trying to study how the adjustments of the parameters affect the performance of the neural network. The only trouble is that this leads to very difficult mathematics as the performance is a non-convex function of the parameters. One of the key ideas of Arthur's work was to bypass the study of parameters to rather study the function computed by the neural network. The nice thing with the function space is that uh, the function of the parameters is not um, the symmetries of neural network when you swap two neurons. If you study the Hessian, for example, the parameters, it will change all your parameters and you, it will make it difficult to analyze what's happening because you have to take care of all these possible symmetries that could change a bit, uh, uh, make a rotation to, the, to your model. But in the function space, everything is nice. And so we, we had a function that, if you, that you could see in two, two ways, either from the parameter space, where it looks like a random function, but if you dualize it, so it's, uh, uh, you, you, look it for, you, you look at it from the function space, it looks like a kernel. And what's interesting is that kernels are nice mathematical objects that have already been widely studied. But what's a kernel? There's lots of ways to, to actually end up with a kernel. The simplest is to, it defines, it takes two points. For example, if it's a kernel on images, it will take two images and give you back a, a, a scalar value which represents how similar the two uh, simple, the two images are. And actually, more abstractly, it ca it's very useful to define, uh, to define um, uh, scalar products on functions. And because, of course, if you have a, a function space, you, it's not obvious what kind of uh, uh, structure you can give it. It's not clear what kind of scalar product you can put on a function space. And uh, a, a way to choose it is to use a, a, a kernel. So loosely, you can think of a kernel as a way to measure the similarity of different objects, which can then be generalized to measure the similarity between two functions like two neural networks. And lots of methods, the idea is that once you have a kernel, for example, if the kernel is smooth, so if nearby points have high similarity and, uh, nearby, uh, and points that are far away have low similarity, it will mean that the, the measure, measure one function, if a function has lots of low frequencies, it will uh, have a low cost, a, a low measure, but if it has a, lots of very high frequencies, even if, if its, uh, if it's uh, size, overall size is the same, the, the measure with the kernel will give it a high cost, so a very high measure. So it's a way to, to choose between functions that you, you like, because they, are, uh, they have mostly low frequencies and, and so on, and functions that you... Uh, but it, it's one way is to, uh, to discriminate between frequencies, but that's actually there's lots of ways a kernel could, uh, could uh, favorize different kinds of functions, not necessarily the frequency. In particular, kernels encode the typical scale of similarity between two objects, kind of like different fundamental forces in physics have different ranges. And one crucial discovery by Arthur and his co-authors Franck Gabriel and Clément Ungler is that each neural network architecture is naturally associated with a single kernel in the infinite width limit. When the number of neurons grow to in the, the neurons in the hidden layers grow to infinity, it tends to a, a simple kernel, that, a limiting kernel that is fixed. So it's the, the, all this, uh, uh, all the effect of this of swapping the neurons disappear completely. So you, you can really analyze it uh, easily. And this is what Arthur and his co-authors did in a paper published at New Apes 2018, the big conference in AI. If you want to know more, you should check out the paper. What we have observed can be nicely described by a kernel, the tangent neural kernel. It is defined in terms of the derivative of the function with respect to the parameters, and it describes how modifying the network function at a point x will influence another point Y. You take two images and one, the two are pretty different, but actually one of them is just a deformation of the other. Then the a convolutional kernel will give you a small, uh, will give you a high similarity because it, it is able to recognize that it's actually uh, a, a deformation. 